Dear students, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Plant Systematics Anatomy and Development course. In this series of videos, we are going to discuss a major topic or aspect of plant systematics and that is morphology. And by morphology, what we mean morphology of angiosperms. So we are going to start with the discussion of a typical angiosperm plant and then we are going to discuss its uh, various parts in uh, different chapters starting with the root. So we shall discuss root, stem, leaf, flower, inflorescence and finally fruit. Morphology as you well aware of the definition the study of external form study of external structure overall body of an organism and in this case an angiospermic plant so morphology study of external form and structure So morphology of angiosperms. So we start with the discussion of a typical angiospermic plant. Angiosperm plant. Now an angiosperm plant consists of two basic parts or two principal parts. two principal parts and those are root and shoot. We can divide an angiosperm plant into two parts, two major parts, two principal parts and that is root and shoot. Now we are not going to go into any detail in this particular chapter or in this particular discussion as we have chapters dedicated to each of these parts a separate chapter for root and then shoot or stem and leaf and so forth let's first draw a diagram a basic diagram of an angiosperm plant so this is the main axis of the plant and let's draw a dashed line and this indicates the soil so we are below the surface of the soil and this is so this is root, the main root or the primary root. The root usually gives off branches and they are known as secondary root and tertiary root and so forth. And usually the root bears just below its tip, very fine hairs which are used to absorb moisture, water and minerals from the soil and they are known as root hairs. So we have root hairs. So this is the underground part. So root is the underground part of the plant. It usually grows downwards and absorbs water and minerals. And also root is the main anchoring organ of the plant. It anchors the plant in the soil and it provides the basic support to the plant. A large tree which is staying upright on the soil has its foundation inside the soil in the form of root as the roots are holding it. So the root is uh, main anchoring organ. So it not only absorbs, it provides anchorage to the plant. So this is root which grows downwards into the soil. The root 
in almost all cases it does not bear buds leaves flowers etc so these organs are usually not found on the root or root does not develop these organs so except its own branches like the primary secondary and tertiary roots and the root hairs none of the other parts of the plant they are born on root next is shoot shoot is the aerial part of the plant it grows above the soil now as we have started this discussion and you can take a look at it again we are discussing a typical angiosperm plant so obviously as we as we shall see in the coming chapters that there are shoots or stem which is found below the surface of the soil the underground stem but we are talking about a typical plant angiosperm plant so shoot is the aerial part of the plant it consists of a main axis and that is known as stem so the main axis of the plant is stem and the stem has nodes and internodes now let's draw it again we have soil and this part of the plant is growing below the surface of the soil is root with a root cap and this is the aerial part now nodes are usually slightly enlarged portions of the stem so at that particular point for example this is stem so at nodes this is not a rule or this is not a hard and fast rule that node will always be an enlarged part of the stem where it is slightly enlarged but in most cases this portion is slightly enlarged so this area so this is the node and the node bears buds leaves and also branches arise from the node actually the branch is extension of the bud that is when bud grows or when the buds open up it develops into a branch so the place on the node where we see a branch it was once a bud and that bud develops into a branch anyway when describing node we have to say that it produces buds and from those buds obviously leaves arise and branches arise from the node as well the internode it is the distance between two successive nodes of the stem so let's draw a stem for example this is a stem and we have a couple of nodes on it now these are nodes so this is a node and this is a node and this is also a node now the distance between two consecutive or successive nodes is known as internode now we can define it simply by saying that the distance between two nodes uh, this definition is correct for all practical purposes but it is misleading in a sense that when what do we mean by distance between two nodes which one of the two nodes so when we add the word consecutive or successive so it clarifies that ambiguity and and the definition of the internode becomes quite clear that is the distance between two successive or consecutive nodes so again let's draw stem so this is a stem and we have a node on it so this is so this is the node and say on this side we have a leaf so a leaf on the node 
and the upper angle this angle between the stem and the leaf is known as axle or axle of the leaf so this part the upper angle as you can see there are two angles so this is the lower angle between the leaf and the stem and this is the upper angle between the leaf and the stem what we are interested is the upper angle between the leaf and the stem so this one is known as axle or axle of the of the leaf this is axillary position and whatever that is born here develops here that is known as axillary so mostly in this position what we call axil of the leaf a bud is produced so this is an axillary bud so this is axillary bud and we shall discuss bud when we start the chapter on stem this is as we have already seen an introduction to a typical angiospermic plant so obviously we are not going to go into details as far as various terms are concerned as we have separate chapters dedicated to all of these now as far as the buds are concerned they may be axillary that is when they arise in the axil of the leaf also known as lateral bud and they may be terminal more about buds in the chapter on stem bud is basically uh, a condensed shoot a suppressed shoot and when it grows it develops into a shoot or a branch branch is also a shoot so we have axillary bud and a terminal bud axillary bud arises in the axil of the leaf let's draw it once more so this is a leaf and this is an axillary bud and this is say the apex of the stem so we also have a bud at the stem apex and this is what we call the terminal or apical bud located at the top of the stem or top of the branch for example in this node we have a leaf and we have a branch developed in the axil of a leaf so we also have a bud on its apex so this is apical bud or terminal bud roots usually lack such buds there are no buds uh, on the root apex of the root or anywhere else so this was something about stem the next is the leaf now we can divide leaf into certain parts leaf has a base or a leaf base the part of the leaf to which it is attached to the stem now this uh, term is somewhat ambiguous or variable it is used variously one of its use is as I just said the part of the leaf which is attached to the stem so this is the base so this is leaf base so leaf has a base it has a stalk to which its expanded portion or lamina is attached so that is known as petiole so petiole is the stalk of the leaf and then we have in most cases an expanded portion of the leaf the green part of the leaf which is known as leaf blade or lamina so lamina is the expanded portion of the leaf and it has various different kinds of shapes so these are three basic parts of the leaf the, its base and its stalk which holds the lamina and the leaf the main part of the leaf which is its blade or expanded portion the green part which does all the photosynthesis and food manufacturing for the plant the lamina as you can see has a network of veins now these veins they divide and re-divide and form a very fine network and these veins these are actually extension of the vascular tissue that enters to the petiole so this is the main vein of the leaf known as midrib 
and this is actually all vascular tissue xylem and phloem and the xylem conducts or carries water and minerals to the leaf various tissues cells of the leaf whereas the phloem carries the manufactured food from the leaf back to the stem and then it is transported to different parts of the plants so this was leaf and finally when the plant attains maturity when it reaches a certain age it develops its reproductive parts known as the flower we have a separate chapter dedicated to flower so flower is the reproductive part of the plant when plant reaches a certain age it starts producing flower the flower has four basic parts hopefully you know about it calyx corolla androsium and gynosium calyx this uh, this is a collective term for sepals all sepals of a flower taken together they constitute the calyx and sepals are the outermost whorl that is when we take a flower into our hand so the outermost uh, leaves are the parts of the flower they are sepals they are mostly green in color for the most part next is the corolla corolla are actually the petals of the flower so collectively petals are known as corolla all the petals taken together they constitute corolla and you see the second whorl and this first and second what we mean when we enter the flower from outside so first whorl is the sepals calyx the second is the corolla or petals this is the second whorl and petals are colored and that is mostly other than green so they can be red blue yellow orange magenta or any shade of a color that you can imagine brown and they can be of different colors this is the second whorl from outside uh, next is the androsium androsium this whorl consists of stamens so stamens taken collectively taken together they constitute androsium stamens are the male part of the flower and stamens are the stamens have two parts this is a very thin delicate stalk known as the filament and it has two anthers on top of the filament so these are anthers anther lobes so this is anther and we have two anther lobes so this is the stamen the male part of the plant which produces pollen grains or microspores the anthers uh, the anther lobes contain what we call pollen sacs or microsporangia and these pollen sacs in turn contain pollen grains pollen grains are the microspores and these pollen grains they develop into male gametophyte which produces male gamete when the process of reproduction starts that is when pollination has taken place so it develops into male gametophyte the pollen grain more about it when we discuss flower and reproduction so don't worry about these terms now and finally the central whorl of the flower the last one the fourth one is the gynosium gynosium is made of carpels so carpels taken together they constitute gynosium carpel has a very typical basic structure like this so we have a basal large and large portion or swollen portion this is known as ovary we have a stalk like structure known as the style and then we have stigma now this is a typical diagram not all carpels are made this way we have certain in fact a lot of variation as far as the final shape of the carpel is concerned but this is just to illustrate the concept so 
each carpal is made of these three parts the basal swollen portion ovary which carries the ovules so let's draw one here so this is we have drawn only one ovule but it can be one two many hundreds or even thousands of ovules within the ovary now what happens when reproduction takes place the ovary itself develops into what we call fruit because we are studying angiosperms the plants in which the seed is enclosed in the fruit and the ovule it develops into seed so ovary develops into fruit and ovule develops into seed so these were various parts of the flower now we can classify them or divide them in another way so an angiosperm just to conclude the discussion of this introductory chapter angiosperm plant can be divided its parts its various organs can be divided into two groups vegetative parts and reproductive parts so before flower what we have discussed they constitute the vegetative parts so vegetative parts start with root you can start with the leaf or stem that's not mandatory so root stem and leaves these are the vegetative parts because they are mainly concerned with the vegetative activities of the plant like respiration growth conduction of food and water and many other activities other than reproduction so these these three parts now we are when we talk about reproduction we mm, are mainly concerned with the sexual reproduction because stem or root or leaves or these parts of the plant can also they may be involved in vegetative reproduction as well but when we talk about reproduction we mostly have sexual reproduction in mind so they carry out vegetative activities of the plant and these are synthesis of food and respiration and growth and so forth so these are the vegetative parts reproductive part as we have just seen the flowers are the reproductive part of the plant as they carry out sexual reproduction and as a result of which as we have just seen what we get seed and fruit so when the sexual reproduction takes place the plant produces fru fruit and inside the fruit we have seeds so this was a brief introduction to an angiospermic plant and its various parts from the next video we shall start separate chapters dedicated to each of these parts starting with root thanks for watching and see you in the next video